the day, amazing viewers. Ready for some fun? Find a comfortable spot, maybe with a refreshing drink, and let's start today's episode. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you didn't, feel free to visit my channel and I'm sure you find one that you would enjoy. And here we go. If you're looking for a kiss and makeup story, hit the back arrow now. This is a bit darker than most. My name is Ned and I've been married to Robin for 6 years now. We have a 2 and 4 year old. Robin is a stay at home mother. My kids have me wrapped around their little fingers. When they say daddy, I melt. I'm usually a take charge kind of guy, but around Robin, I defer to her equally aggressive personality. That being said, around her friends and her family, I'm seen as a meek and mild, go with the flow, don't rock the boat guy. It's sad that people are so quick to pigeonhole a person. It carries over into the bedroom too, as Robin dictates what our agenda will be on any given night. Don't get me wrong, she likes sex and so do I, and I have no complaints. As recently as 6 weeks ago, I was a sane normal guy. When I look in the mirror now, I see the devil. Maybe I'll die in prison or maybe I'll never be charged. I am not going to do anything other than put a couple of cheaters in a very difficult situation. I don't feel all that bad about it. In a convolutedly twisted sense, I'm making my wife's dream come true. I'm a big guy who works out regularly. I can easily bench press 200, probably more if I tried, but I don't want to jack up my back. As I carried Spencer over my shoulder, I was glad that I was in great shape. He was kicking and wiggling around until I pinched his nose shut. With his mouth duct taped, that effectively cut off all of his oxygen. I can keep on holding your nose as long as you keep acting up, I calmly told him. From that point forward, Spencer was very obedient. With the miner's light on my forehead, I navigated through the darkness. The temperature change was drastic. Outside it was a balmy summer night, but now it was cold and clammy. The water drops helped to cool my body as this was more than a morning workout. I did have to stop several times, as this trip took 30 minutes to complete. At each stop I jotted down the course I'd taken. Once at my target destination, I less than gently dumped Spencer on the ground. This is what I think about guys that duck other men's wives. Spencer tried to protect his jewels, but to no avail. The built up rage was bubbling to the surface. I probably kicked him two dozen times, mostly near his crotch. Poor little Spencer was crying. After I finished my water bottle, I headed back to retrieve Robin. I counted my steps carefully as I needed to not only get out, but also get back. My shirt was soaked from the water drops and sweat. Spencer, who until recently lived a few doors down from my house, is Robin's lover. My hope is that his becomes was in a few days. I found out by accident, which I guess is how we cockles usually do. When Spencer and his family moved, a middle-aged man bought his house. Paul is a likable guy and I have a beer or two with him in his man cave. To date there's been no reason to introduce him to Robin or my kids. He's really into baseball, which was never my favorite. Nonetheless, about a month after he moved in, Paul helped to turn my world upside down. Hey Ned, you should see what the dude left behind. I found a box of DVDs behind a false wall in the laundry room. You will definitely want to watch some of these. I'm game. Corn. Yeah, looks like hidden camera stuff. I bet there's 60 of these things dating back 3 years. This one is the most recent. It was taken a week before I closed on the house. Paul slid the disc in and the screen came to life. Sitting on the front of the bar stool, I took a swig of my beer. The camera angle was poor, but I could clearly make out that the man was Spencer, and the woman was someone I'd seen at the neighborhood picnics. I think her name is Sandra, and I'm pretty sure she's married. Watching her suck Spencer to completion gave me a raging hard on. After some rubbing and buffing on Sandra, Spencer pounded her from behind, which was not nearly as eruptic. Do you recognize them? Yep, that's the guy who used to live here. He's married and that's not his wife. The lady is somebody else's wife, and she lives in the neighborhood too. I think her name is Sandra. This one is even hotter as Paul changed DVDs. Paul's phone rang so he excused himself to take the call. 10 seconds into this DVD I wanted to scream what the duck. As bare as the day she was born, Robin was scooting into the middle of the bed. I watched in disgust as my marriage went up in smoke. Spencer hopped on the bed, straddled Robin's body, and then fed his clock to her. It was more Spencer face ducking her than Robin giving him a BJ. The net effect was the same as Spencer filled Robin's mouth. Whereas watching the first BJ got me hard, I was as soft as cotton watching this. The pain in my chest didn't leave any room for excitement of that kind. My desire to unalive both of them was running high. After Spencer rolled off of Robin, they laid there giggling and talking. What's new with Clucky Boy? That hopeless one. I did get him to eat your cream pie. No way. How'd you do that? When I got home on Tuesday, Ned was frisky and wanted a BJ. 
I told him we should do a six and nine. He agreed so I got on top and let you come into his mouth. It was all I could do to keep from retching. I just thought Robin was extremely turned on that day. Ducking which, she will pay. He will too. They were so ducking proud of themselves. The hits just kept on coming, you know what I dreamed Spencer. That we ditch our spouses and live the rest of our lives together. Closing my eyes, I seemed to disappear into my own little world. Paul's voice brought me back to reality. You okay dude? Yeah, just a little headache. Looking at the screen, Robin was bouncing on Spencer like a cowgirl. Her modest size blobs jiggling as he pinched her. More precious memories down the toilet. I'd seen enough so I told Paul that I was leaving. Hey Ned, before you go, do you recognize her? Not really, another lady from the neighborhood. When was that one filmed? Two days before the first one I showed you. Trying to hide my anger well this will save you some money, not having to buy corn. What a dumb slut. He was ducking everyone in the neighborhood and she thinks he's into her. As quickly as I could do it gracefully, I left Paul's place and started walking. If I went home now, I'd likely do or say something I might regret. Then again, it might be just what I need to do. By the time I passed through my front door, darkness had closed in, and not just the skies, but also my soul. Robin was quite miffed, where have you been? Without making eye contact I don't feel well. I'm headed to bed. As I close and locked our bedroom door I heard, that doesn't answer my question. Where were you? Flopping down, in the middle of the bed, I heard the door handle rattle. Open this door. I couldn't contain it any further. Quickly opening the door I growled at her, listen slot, find somewhere else to sleep tonight. Robin's eyes opened wide, not really in fear, more like disbelief. Slamming the door closed I returned to my prone position on the bed. My outburst had awakened the kids, which I regretted. Whether I really got any good sleep is up for discussion. When the sun poked through the blinds, I was still beat. The hot shower helped, but my legs were weak. The kids were still sleeping, so I moved around quietly. Robin was waiting for me in the kitchen. I poured myself a cup of coffee before looking at her. I don't know what you think you know, but it was mean to call me a slut. Oh duck you. You're worthless cheating count. I've seen the video. I don't know what video you're talking about. It has to be somebody else. You stupid ducking hoe. Spencer filmed your duck sessions. I'm divorcing you. Robin went from total denial to aggressive witch in the blink of an eye. Spoken spitefully, Spencer says you can't afford to divorce me. His brother is a lawyer so he should know. I'd get the kids, child support, and lots of alimony. Plus, you have to pay for somewhere for me and the kids to live. I've not denied you anything so only your poor little pride is hurt. So I had sex with Spencer, big deal, get over it. I threw my coffee cup over Robin's head, shattering it against the far wall. Good thing the window wasn't close by, as that would have been an expensive release of anger. Robin ran out of the kitchen, slamming our bedroom door behind her. I grabbed her and my car keys, and then left the house. I didn't know where I was going, but I knew where I had been and not surprisingly, I didn't like being there anymore. Since I wouldn't answer her calls, Robin sent text messages. Why did you take my car keys? Because I could. Quit acting like a baby. It was just sex. You're the one I love. I can live without your kind of love. You'll get over this. Come home. Ducking witch. I'm not about to get over this. I knew I wouldn't get to keep it, but I withdrew all of the money from our checking and savings accounts. It didn't amount to much, but better me holding it than her. Using the internet to research divorce in my state confirmed how screwed up the system was. Living in a 50-50 state, her cheating meant squat. I decided to put off starting a divorce. I really couldn't afford to move out, so I returned home to find an empty house. Robin's clothes were still here. My guess is that she must have found the other set of car keys and went even though I hadn't filed for divorce, I had no intention of spending another loving couple day with Robin. Our rented house was a three bedroom ranch, and all three bedrooms were in use. One of us was going to be sleeping on the couch. Since Robin wasn't here, she didn't get a chance to negotiate who that would be. When she gets back she will find all of her clothes in the living room. The moon found me alone that night. No sign of Robin or my kids. Just as well as the desire to waterboard Robin was still coursing through my veins. Rather than sit and mope, I destroyed Robin's wedding dress. Box cutters work really well, if you ever find yourself needing to know what to use. Our little paper shredding machine was up to the challenge of destroying any picture of Robin. Years from now my kids might wonder why there aren't any pictures of them being cherished by their mother. I can always attribute it to Robin being camera shy. Robin returned but didn't stay long. I guess she doesn't like the idea of sleeping on the couch. Spending time with the kids really helped to brighten my day. 
How long are you going to play the martyr? How long are you going to play the slut? Deal with it, Ned. It started off innocently, but once we had sex, well he's better than you, and I don't intend to stop seeing him. Help me move my stuff back into the bedroom and you'll get lucky. My idea of getting lucky is you taking a steak knife and slitting your wrists. How about I just divorce you whiny bum? Is that what you want? I could easily find someone else your kids can call daddy. Think about it. You'll be giving me all of your paycheck, and some other guy will be getting my kitty. Now get your head out of your bum or that's exactly what I'm going to do. When I blocked her attempt to reach our bedroom, she took the kids and fled the scene. After a few days, Robin and the kids moved back in. Although we shared a bed, I pushed her onto the floor every time she tries to snuggle. Look Ned, if you don't start fulfilling your husband duty, of having sex, including you going down on me, I'm going to start bringing men home. Maybe that's what you want. Is it it? Do you want to sit there wanking away while some real man makes love to me? I grabbed and yanked a handful of Robin's curled hair. Pulling her to within a whisker of my nose, if you have sex in front of my kids, I will make you and Jim pay. Got it witch. For the first time in this stabacle, there was fear in Robin's eyes. That didn't stop her from baiting me as she raced down the hall and slammed the bedroom door shut. You're going to be paying me every month for the next 16 years. We didn't share a bed that night, as the door remained locked. I was running out of time. She will likely file for divorce soon, and all of the nightmares of me supporting her and her lovers will become reality. The recipe for disaster is to leave a beaten man alone in his house for several hours every night. Eventually I settled on a solution that works really well for me. Whether I get away with it or not remain to be seen. I knew I had to try. Waiting for the opportune time, the revenge god smiled on me. Robin had just put the kids down for the night when she hit me with I'm going out for the night. Don't wait up for me. That was the spark that lit the fuse. As she left the kitchen, into the garage, I jumped her. Sitting on her back, pinning her to the cement floor, I quickly wrapped duct tape around her head, sealing her mouth shut. Pinning her hands behind her back, I duct taped them together. Even though Robin was thrashing around, I was able to do dump her sorry bum into the trunk of her car. Checking Robin's cell phone, I found that she'd been texting with Spencer. I needed him to take the bait, so I sent a text from Robin's cell I can't stop thinking about you. Want to go skinny dipping in the moonlight? In under my new sure, where? Lake Moore off of Highway 68. Park away from the lights at the very north end. Okay, half hour or so. Grabbing the bag I'd prepared from my car, I tossed it into the front seat of Robin's car. Leaving the kids alone concerned me, but not enough to stall me. I made it to Lake Moore in 20 minutes. Putting on the dishwater blonde wig to match how Robin normally wears her hair, I waited in the driver's seat. I filled my left palm with cinnamon powder. When Spencer pulled into the parking lot, he parked on my passenger side. He exited his car and opened my front passenger door. As he backed into the car, hey little lady, great idea. When he turned towards me, he realized she was me. Grabbing him by his hair, with my right hand, I raised my left hand and blew the cinnamon powder into his face. As he was coughing and gagging, I used my right hand to slam his head into the dash. I moved quickly to pull Spencer from the car. He was really struggling to breathe as that powder did a much better job than I expected. Like a rodeo star, I had the duct tape over Spencer's mouth and his hands taped behind him in an impressive 15 seconds. Doing everything with latex gloves on was just one of the precautions I took to not leave easy DNA evidence behind. This is what I think about guys that duck other men's wives. I kicked him in his nuts so hard that he doubled up into the fetal position. Do you understand who is in charge here? I may have been mild and meek with Robin, but I'm prepared to unalive you if you don't cooperate. With a look of absolute fear, Spencer nodded in the affirmative. I guess it brings you up to date. Spencer is waiting patiently for my return. I'm a nice guy, as I could just leave him there, all alone. Instead, I popped open the trunk and looked at Robin's panic-stricken face. She was a poster child for a horror movie. White-eyed, with a look of absolute fear, as tears dripped off the side of her face. Come on Robin, it's not that bad. Let me guess. We can work this out. You'll give up Spencer. It was just sex. You really love me. You never meant to hurt me. Like a bobblehead, Robin was nodding repeatedly, as if I would ever believe the thing she said. Sorry babe, too little, too late. Don't worry though, I'm not even going to unalive you. You're going to die of natural causes. Just to let you know what a dumb slot you are, do you remember the day you told Spencer you wanted to ditch your spouses and live happily ever after? Robin's head slowly nodded affirmatively. Well two days later he made a video of Sandra sucking and ducking him. You were just the slot of the day. It's almost comical that you were so naive thinking he was really into you. 
Oh well, let's get the two of you back together. Robin grunted and groaned as she flopped around the trunk like a large mouth bass on the deck of a fishing boat. I pinched her nose shut and gave her the same warning I'd given Spencer. After placing Robin on the ground, I shut the trunk of her sedan. As if I was dead lifting weights, I slung Robin over my shoulder and began my 30 minute journey. Stopping only once, I followed my map back to the location I'd placed Spencer. 80 steps, right turn, 164 steps, left turn, and on and on it went. 14 turns with no room for mistakes. Robin was my umbrella as the water dropped randomly. Just when I was beginning to think I'd made a mistake, there he was. Spencer gurgled and groaned when my light appeared. Very gently, I feathered Robin onto her butt. There you go kids. You can live out your life together. Wasn't that your dream Robin? You wanted to live the rest of your life with Spencer. See, I make dreams come true. Unfortunately, I doubt you live longer than a few days though, but you will be together. No need to thank me. You're welcome. Plus, now you don't need to sneak around anymore. Hard to believe that, what did you call me Robin? That hopeless wimp. So yeah, hard to believe that hopeless wimp has done this, isn't it? Their pleading eyes gave me the warm fuzzies. I bet I could get anything I wanted from either of them. There wasn't a thing that came to mind. I'm done with them. They ended me emotionally and turned me into a cold-hearted maniac. They only have themselves to blame. Both of you were really proud of yourselves when Robin tricked me into eating your cream pie. That pretty much pushed me over the edge when I found out about that. All that intimate giggling you two shared talking about it. Thanks for making a video of that encounter Spencer. You saved me thousands in private detective charges. As far as the world knows, I'm still that accepting cluckleded husband. Tears weren't about to sway me. I did them one at a time. Kneeling on their back, I exchanged the duct tape around their head for a leather buckle up full head gag. I put a padlock on it. The only way it was coming off was if it was cut off with a sharp knife. Removing all of their clothing required me to remove the duct tape from their hands. Spencer tried to push me off, but once his head slammed on the rocky surface, he laid there days long enough for me to get his clothes off and hands restrained again. Robin, having seen that, didn't struggle at all. It was tough to understand what Robin was saying, but it sounded something like I'm sorry Ned. Please don't do this. My kids need me. I'll be the best wife ever. Here's how it's going to play out Robin. You and Spencer are currently about a thousand feet down in Elvin's cave. The cave is home to bears, but it's likely to be the rats that eat you. Once you relieve yourself, that smell will permeate the air, and then the fun begins. Like a scouting party, one or two rats will find you, and then you'll hear them signaling the mischief. Your hours are numbered once that happens. Not much you can do when a thousand rats descend on defenseless prey. Unlike you, they can see in the dark. You could survive a bite or two, but when you have a thousand trying to get at least one mouthful, well, you'll be deep in quickly. Occasionally drops of water from the ceiling will hit you. You might mistakenly believe that the rats have found you. Try to ignore those drops. You'd have thought I had electrocuted them, the way they thrashed about. It's almost fitting, don't you think? You two were filthy rats, the way you treated your spouses. You kept us in the dark, and now you get to live out your lives in the dark. Retrieving another water bottle from my cargo shorts, I wasted no time emptying it. I'd worked up quite a sweat carrying those two. You'll need water to survive, so just dunk your head in any of the pools of water that you find. Be careful as some of them are deep enough to trap you. There are no sharp edges to cling to, and they are so slippery that if you slide in, you'll never get out. Watch yourself as you scurry along in the dark, as the drop-offs can be several hundred feet down. Make one wrong turn and you could end up 2,000 feet below the surface. Both were sobbing and gasping for air. I manhandled each such that I could duct tape their feet to each other. When I leave, I didn't want them jumping up and chasing after me. Now I'll admit I'm one sick duck. I'm getting a kick out of this, but I'll let you have a fighting chance. Those gags don't normally have a padlock on them, but yours do. I really don't want you to be screaming your heads off, although you'd likely invite predators before humans found you. I'm not that sporting, but I'll cut your hands free before I leave. You'll have to work together to remove the rest of the duct tape restraining you. It will be pitch black. Spencer knows all about it as he's been here over an hour now. Here Robin, let me show you. I turned off my miner's light. If you've never been in a cave without light, you cannot begin to appreciate complete darkness. Flipping the switch, my light came back to life. I breathed a sigh of relief. Even though I knew the way out, doing it without lights would be next to impossible. Still think I'm going to pay your slot bum for the next 16 years which. Now it's going to be some other lady your kids are calling mommy. I'd ask you for your last requests, but guess what, I don't care. I hope you and your maker can come to some agreement on how you lived your lives. Just in case Spencer was thinking about having sex with Robin, I decided to delay it a bit. 
This is what I think about guys that duck other men's wives. He tried to avoid my heel, but when I stomped on his nuts, he passed out. After cutting the duct tape restraining their arms, I left without a word, and definitely no regrets. I heard Robin's muffled cries echo into the darkness. After I left the cave, I put Robin and Spencer's clothing and personal belongings, including their cell phones, in their respective cars. Even though the opening to the cave was a thousand yards away, there was only a small chance that a search party would enter the cave. Noises echo and there are thousands of twists and turns. And there are bears. The lake was only 50 yards away, and the seaweed had been known to grab ankles and drown people. Deep down I was sure that I screwed up something and they pinned this on me. I made my way to the railroad tracks and caught a coal train headed into town. The shoes I'd worn into the cave were discarded into a dumpster, along with everything else in my arsenal. I was home by 3 am. My little angels were still sleeping. Life is good. Plus 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 plus. Epilogue. The following day, a concerned citizen reported the two vehicles. That started the ball rolling on a full-blown investigation. Being the unconcerned spouse, I was brought in for questioning. My lawyer never tired of turning away the wolves. I spoke nary a word to any of the detective's questions. I had no alibi for the evening the cheaters disappeared. If the police thought they could convict me, let them try. They never did. The case is as cold as Robin's heart was in her last months. No bodies were ever found. The sheriff asked for and received a search warrant for my house, but there was nothing for them to find. I'm not pretending to be smarter than the system, but they just couldn't pin this on me. Perhaps if they had found the skeletons it would have been different. My mind wouldn't rest until I knew for sure, so I had both kids' DNA tested. They were mine. It wasn't long after Spencer disappeared before a handful of DVDs made their way to his spouse. She needed to know, so I convinced Paul to make copies of some of them. Neither of us could get a divorce until a year passed, and then we could file for abandonment. We kept in touch and both divorces were heard and granted on the same day. Although she couldn't get the life insurance payout until Spencer was declared dead, she wasted no time in finding a money honey to support her and her kids. I was happy for her. Trusting women just isn't something I can do. Year after year goes by without a meaningful relationship. Several ladies tried to ply me with sex, and as many succeeded. None were able to turn our carnal couplings into something more permanent. I think I'm afraid that if I get close to someone, I'll disclose the terrible thing I did, and nothing much good would come of that. So, like that song said, my prison is going through life full alone. My first choice for a nanny only lasted two weeks. The second attempt found the nanny that would last forever. Danny was older than me by a day, and the kids took to her immediately. My friends think I'm probably shagging her, but we just don't have that kind of relationship. She loves my kids but trusts men about as much as I trust women. We were a good match. When I could afford it, I bought a house. Danny moved in and has her own bedroom, where she has lived ever since. I think of her as a sister, and she treats me like a brother. If the system was administered fairly, shit like this wouldn't happen. But it isn't, and so it does. I'm back to acting sane again. Oh yeah, one other thing. I haven't a clue if there's a single rat in Eldon's cave. I was just messing with their heads. I'll apologize the next time I see them. If you're still here, thank you. Wherever you are, I hope it's somewhere cozy and warm, not in a secluded cave in your birthday suits will duct tape to a mistake. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.